Hello, welcome to the I'm Excited podcast. I am your host, David Hicks. Whether you're watching or listening, thank you so much for doing so. As always, I hope and may I be praying that this is a blessing to you and that you'll be able to take that blessing and share it with others. We have been doing a deep dive in the kingdom of God, trying to understand what it is, uh, the benefits of being a citizen of it, how to become a citizen of it. And along the way, we've tried to focus in on the cultural values, the world view of this, that we should have when we're members of the kingdom of God. Every nation has a, a culture, generally speaking, and, and there are you know, cultures within that nation, of course, but p- different people of different races, of different cultural backgrounds have different ways of viewing life. Different things that they value, different things that they don't value. They detest the anti-values, if you will. And so along the way, we've been looking at how we should view things in the kingdom of God using mostly Jesus' teachings. Now today, we're going to get into three different passages that really just list out in, in one very centralized location not only the things that we should embrace, that we should strive for, commands that we should obey, values that we should have in the kingdom of God, but a whole bunch of things that we need to reject, that need, that we need to let go of and get out of our lives. And those are the things that I refer to as the anti-values, the things that stand against our values, the things that stand against what we need to embrace as followers of Jesus Christ. Now to do a just very quick review, because I reviewed almost all of this in my last podcast, in the last video. What is God's kingdom? A spiritual nation where Jesus reigns over the hearts of its citizens. When you make Jesus your Lord, you are making him your king. You're saying, I'm going to obey you. And so uh, keep that in mind that Jesus is our king and he rules over our hearts. How do we become a citizen of it? Uh, it's described different ways. As you, For example, read through the book of Acts, but I summarize it this way. Believe in Jesus, decide to follow him, to obey him. That's also referred to as repenting, repentance, and be baptized in his name. And to, be, to get into more detail, in the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God washes away our sins. He makes us new. We uh, become his children. We become citizens of his kingdom. And then it's a matter of learning how to live as a son of God, a daughter of God, as a member of his kingdom. So what is the worldview, the way we think and, and look at life when we follow Jesus, when we're members of the kingdom? What are, what's our culture? What are, what's our values? And so some of the ones we've looked at so far, possessions, we think of them as being ours, not mine. Things are my possessions in the sense that I'm res- the one responsible for taking care of these particular possessions. But as the way I think of it, I think of it as belonging to the kingdom of God as a whole. Money, the goal of earning money is to help the poor, to bless others, to take care of others. And yes, of course, you take, do take care of yourself. You take care of your wife or husband. You take care of your children. Yes, by blessing others, I'm not saying people. it always has to be people outside the family. Of course, we take care of our own. But beyond that, we want to have money to help people in need, to help people in times of distress. And so that's the way we think of money. Greatness, the greatest people are the servants, the ones who lower themselves to do the things that no one else wants to do, the ones who are humble, the ones who don't exalt themselves above others, the ones who spend their lives not being served, but serving. Family, we think of family as anyone else who's following Jesus. That's, you're following Jesus, you're my brother, you're my sister. Uh, you're a, uh, perhaps as a woman, you're a mother to me and I'm a son to you. So that is how we view our true family. That's how we view our family. Love. We love even those who don't love us. Everybody 
loves the people who loves him. Almost everybody loves the people who love them. There are exceptions. But beyond that, as members of God's kingdom, the way we see things, it's the way God sees things. He lets the sun rise for the evil and the good. He sends rain on the just and the unjust. He, Jesus died for us before we ever knew him, knowing we would live our, a lot of our lives in rebellion to him. He died for us anyway to take the punishment for our wrongdoings. That's their love for us. They loved us when we were enemies to them. We need to love our enemies and those who don't love us as well. And then last in our last podcast, we looked at the value of race, the way we view the different races in this world, the different cultures, the, the different ethnicities, the people of different backgrounds and from different countries. And the way we looked at it is we studied Acts chapter 10. In Acts chapter 10, we read about a man named Cornelius who was not of any sort of Jewish heritage whatsoever, but he loved God. He was a man who would give generously, taking care of the poor. He would pray often. He would fast, intentionally go without food and probably sometimes without even drinking in order to give that time to prayer, in order to lift up others to the Lord, in order to serve the Lord and, and be extra focused on Him. So that's the kind of guy he was. And God saw him. God saw his heart. And so he sent an angel to Cornelius and told Cornelius to send some men to go get Peter and bring Peter the apostle and bring Peter back to him. Now, this is this is the days after Jesus died. He rose. He went back to heaven. And up until this time, the good news of salvation, forgiveness through faith in Jesus Christ had only been preached to the Jews and to the Samaritans up to this point. The Jews are the, are the physical descendants of Jacob the grandson of Abraham. Abraham had a son named Isaac. Isaac had twins, Jacob and Esau, and it was Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to whom God gave his promises. And the descendants of Jacob were the Hebrews, known as the Hebrews at first, later the Israelites, later as Jews. And so up until that time, the good news had been preached to them and had been preached some to the Samaritans who were of a mixed Jewish race. But Cornelius was not Jewish at all. And so Peter had a mindset that people who aren't Jews, they're unclean. You deal with them as little as possible. You talk to them as little as possible, have nothing to do with them. But God sent a special vision to Peter to teach him that God has made all people clean. God has made all people clean. That was the first step. Peter had to take two major steps in his understanding of Jesus and the good news of salvation. One was he had to realize that all people are clean in God's sight. And then as uh, he goes to Cornelius' house and as Cornelius welcomes him and he has his family there, he has his friends there, he has so many people there to hear the good news of Jesus. Peter says this in Acts chapter 10, beginning at verse 34. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism. It doesn't matter your background. God does not show favoritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. You fear God, you respect God, you do what's right in his sight. It doesn't matter your background. God will accept you. And then he launches in to teaching others, to teaching Cornelius and his family about Jesus. And then the Holy Spirit, at the end of his sermon, or not very long into his sermon, his, his teaching, the Holy Spirit yeah, uh, makes, makes a statement. He comes down and fills Cornelius and, and all those with him. They start speaking another language miraculously, clearly demonstrating to Peter and the other Jews that were with him that the Holy Spirit had accepted the Gentiles. The good news of Jesus was for them as well, and that Peter commands for them to be baptized. And they had been baptized with the Holy Spirit. Peter immediately commands that they be baptized in water, baptized in the name of Jesus. So the good news of Jesus Christ is for everyone. And just to reemphasize that, I want to read a, a short passage I didn't get to in our last 
podcast, and then we'll get to the new stuff. Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 and 7. John, another apostle of Jesus, who he, uh, his brother James and uh, also Peter, they were the, of the 12 who Jesus called apostles, who Jesus chose to be his special messengers. John, uh, he worked with John, his brother James, and then also with Peter closer than he did others. And so John was given this special revelation that he's been writing about. And then uh, verse 14, he writes about seeing this another angel. Uh, chapter 14, excuse me, verse 6. Then I saw another angel flying in midair. And he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. To every nation, tribe, language, and people. He said in a loud voice, fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. Fear God and give him glory. The hour of judgment has come. So we've talked about how there is a judgment day coming. We can be prepared for that judgment day by putting our faith in Jesus, by becoming citizens of God's kingdom. On judgment day, we are forgiven. The punishment that we should have received for all the things that we did wrong, Jesus already took that punishment. And by putting our faith in Jesus, we're accepting his sacrifice for us. We're accepting the sacrifice he made for us, and so we, we are forgiven. And, but also by accepting Jesus' sacrifice, what we're going to be seeing today, and what, we try to, what I've been trying to tell throughout this series, is that we choose to follow the commands and the teachings of Jesus. And so, but the bottom line is, the good news is for every nation, every tribe, every tongue, every language, every people on the earth, and there is no one in our lives of any background that we should look at and say the good news of Jesus is not for them. And if we're harboring hatred in our heart toward any other race, any other people, any other language, we need to get that out of our heart as quickly as possible because that is not how God views things. That is not how God views things and is not how we should view things. It's not how we should be raised. All right, so let's look then at some passages that summarize our values and I guess what I call the anti-values. Unfortunately, there's not a good English word for it. The things that stand in contrast to our values uh, in God's kingdom. We want to start with Colossians chapter 3. This is Paul writing a letter to the church at Colossae. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. When we are baptized, in Romans chapter 6, it describes us as being uh, buried with Christ. Uh, we die with Christ, we're buried with him, and we're raised with him. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Set your minds on, on the values and, and all things related to the kingdom of God. Set your minds on God. Set your minds on Jesus. Set your minds on the Holy Spirit. Set your mind. Think about how they want us to live and what they have done for us and what they want us to do for others. All sorts of things related to the kingdom of God. Let that be the predominant things that enter our minds. Verse 3, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Christ is coming back, and we will appear with him in glory when he does. Verse 5. Now, he's going to talk about some of the anti-values. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, your, your bodily desire, fleshly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practices 
and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Here, there, here, there is no Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. All right, so what did he give us there? He gives several things that we need to get out of our life. These are not things we value. These are not things we want to keep in our life. It, sexual immorality did a, done a very long series on that. The short story of sexual immorality is that God gave sex. It is his wedding present to husband and wife, to man and woman who agree to be in a covenant together for the rest of their days. That is the environment in which God wants it. And then when we take it out of that environment with whomever, for whatever reason, that is the realm of sexual immorality. And so we want to put that off and have self-control over our sexual desires. Uh, impurity, I wrote a definition for those of you watching, means morally wrong, especially in sexual matters. It's kind of a heavy emphasis um, in this passage about being sexually pure. Another term we looked at was malice that came up. Malice, the intention or desire to do evil. Ill will. Some translations, uh, and it may be one, one that comes up later, but there's the word debauchery. Debauchery, and it means excessive indulgence in sensual pleasures. And then one very strange term that we just read, Scythian. Scythian is a mem is, uh, was a member of a warrior nomadic tribe located in Asia. And it's why he singles them out, I have no clue. I would have had to live back in that day to why he's trying to explain that in God's kingdom, there's not Greek, there's not Jew, there's not circumcised, not uncircumcised, not barbarian, not Scythian, not slave, not free. Christ is everything. Christ is all to us. And he's in everybody. Whatever your state in life is, whatever your background, whatever you're from, Christ when you is in you. When you have put your faith in him, decided to follow him, baptized in his name, Christ is in you. He's in everybody in God's kingdom. So a lot of these things are things that we need to to look at and get out of our life. Now he's going to talk about things that we do value, that we do want in our lives. Verse 12, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, soak that statement in. As a part of God's kingdom, you are holy. And even if you've not entered God's kingdom yet, know that you are dearly loved. For whatever anybody has told you how you are unloved and God hates you, God abhors you, God doesn't want anything to do with you, he doesn't want you to follow him, he rejects you. Okay, reject those statements. Absolutely reject those statements because you are so loved. You are so loved that Jesus died for you. And it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter your background. You come to Jesus. Put your trust in him. Be baptized in the name. God will forgive you because you are dearly loved. You are dearly loved. All right. Um, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves. We're putting on these values. Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other. And forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love. Above all these virtues, over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you are called to peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom as you sing psalms, in other words, songs, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. 
So here, there are some huge things that we put into our life. Compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, love. For we forgive one another. As God forgave us, God freely forgave us, we need to forgive one another. And, and with the highest value, the most important thing to have in our lives, love for one another. You, you matter to me. I care about you. What happens to you, it matters to me. You, I value you in my heart. That's what love is all about. And, so, and as we go about our lives, we let the peace of Christ fill our hearts. The peace that comes from trusting him, the peace that comes to know, to, from knowing that we, have, we were at enmity with God, but now, thanks to Jesus, we are at peace with God. We are at peace with God. And, of course, being thankful, singing songs to God, worshiping him, and being thankful for all the gracious things he's done for us and for the gift of eternal life that is coming among the many other blessings he's given us. Verse 18, uh, now he gets into specific roles in life and, and what we're called to in those roles. Wives, submit to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not embitter your children, or they will become discouraged. Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything and do it not only when their eye is on you and to win their favor, but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Anyone who does wrong will be repaid for his wrong. And there is no favoritism. Again, there's no favoritism. It doesn't matter your background. You're not going to get special favors from God. Um, he judges us equally. And he judges fairly. Okay. So, there are specific, in specific roles, we are called to do specific things because, again, those, those are the things that are the most helpful to God's kingdom. Uh, I'm not going to do it deep dive into wives and the whole submitting thing and, and husbands, you know, love your wives, maybe do a marriage study on that. But please understand, wives, he's not trying to insult you. He's not trying to beat you down or anything. It is a way of honoring the Lord when you submit to your husbands and is a way of teaching your husbands how they're supposed to submit to God when you role model submission to them. Uh, husbands, you are to love your wives, not treat them harshly, not be cruel to them, not be mean to them. You are called to take care of them and to love them. Children obey your parents. And then uh, he talked about specifically in terms of slaves. For us nowadays, most of us aren't in a situation of slavery. I pray to God that you're not. Uh, but if you are, that he may deliver you. But think of it in terms of being employed, you know, as an employee I think in terms of, or if you're a business owner, use your business this way as, as well. But we think in terms of honoring Jesus, that we're truly with our business or in our employment, we're serving Jesus, not the earthly person to whom we report. That's who we're truly serving, and we'll honor God through that. All right, let's look at Romans chapter 12, verse 9 through 21. Romans 12, 9 through 21. Here he starts out, love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Or in other translations, it says love must be without hypocrisy. Okay, we can't mingle evil with our love, darkness with our goodness. Um, hate, it, hate what is evil. Hate what is evil. That's the, hate the anti-values. All right? Cling to what is good. Cling to it. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. 
What do we say about money? You know, gold burning money is to help the poor, bless others. And it's not just money, it's our possessions. They're ours. So we want to glorify God with them. We want to bless others with what we have. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. I want to single that, single that out. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. That's more of the, the value of love, where we love those who don't love us. Instead of seeking revenge on them when they do bad to us, we seek their good. We do what's right for them. Um, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. Let God's wrath take care of revenge. You don't worry about it, in other words. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will keep burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Overcome evil with good. Now, going back to that, if your enemy's hunger, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. And doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. That can be one of two things, and both of them are, are good. One is that you can, the burning coals could mean that you're convicting their conscience so badly that they come to the realization they need to change. They need to repent. Another explanation I've heard is that they had it back in the days, they had a form of a, almost like a coal miner's hat, so to speak, that you could put uh, coals in it and it would light your way. Okay. Um, the, somehow they have a way to protect their head from the heat, but the, the coals would light the way so that you could see at night to walk. Well, if you're heaping burning coals of uh, fire on their head, then they're going to clearly see how they also are supposed to follow Jesus and love everyone um, as they're being loved by someone who they're being mean to. That, that's going to call them to repentance and call them to follow Jesus. One last passage to look at is Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 through 26. In our last passage, Paul's writing to the church at Rome. Now he's going to write to the church at Galatia. And we're going to see, again, these things that we need to embrace and things that we need to reject. Now, in this, well, let's just start, and then I'll explain as we go. Verse 16, so I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. So Paul is going to contrast two things. One, our bodily desires, our fleshly desires, versus the desires of the Spirit. Now, you can view that in one of two ways, either desires of the Holy Spirit, most certainly this, uh, the things we're going to read about would qualify, and then it could also mean he's talking about the desires of the spirit God gave us, that God put within us. Without the spirit, we're dead. When we die, our spirit leaves our body. What we truly are is a spirit using this physical body to interact with this physical world God made. So its desires could be also the opposite of what our fleshly desires are. Either way, more likely he's referring to the Holy Spirit, but it the the bottom line is, it will be very clear what we are to value and what we are to not value. All right, let's go on. Let's go on. Verse 17, for the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other so that you do not do what you want. There is a measure of self-denial in following Jesus. Jesus himself admitted that when he talked about how we need to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow him. We're going to want to do things that are evil, that are wrong, that are, that are in contrast to what we should be doing, and those we have to say no to. Verse 18, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under law. Probably referring to the law of Moses, but... We'll get a deep dive on that. Well, I have no plans to, so let's just keep going. Verse 19, the acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery. That, 
excessive indulgence in sensual pleasures we referred to earlier, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish, amb selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. And the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. You will not receive an inheritance in the eternal kingdom that is coming if you live by these values, if you live by these things. So those are the bad desires we should not live by. Let's see what we should live by. Verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit, the result in following the desires of the Holy Spirit, of our spirit, is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ have crucified the sinful nature and its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us not be, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. So again, uh, we see in the Word of God these passages that just lay out before us the things that we should embrace and value and get into our lives, and the highest of which it being love. And then all the things that we need to get out of our lives, that we need to reject, the evil we need to hate, the things that we need to let go of. So, thank you so much for listening. Embrace the values of the kingdom of God. Embrace the values of God, the values of Jesus, the ways of the Holy Spirit. And let's reject the ways of Satan. Let's reject the ways of evil. God bless you.